Today on The Grave Talks, the haunted Anderson Hotel. To many, the sleepy little town of Lawrenceburg, Kentucky may not seem like the ideal setting for a violent ghost story. To others, those who know it, it is the perfect setting for such an encounter. The Anderson Hotel, or to the locals, the haunted Anderson Hotel, is a relic of the past that won't seem to die, even though its doors have been shuttered, reopened, and then shuttered again due to the extreme supernatural activity. In the past years, paranormal investigators have documented violent activity, including aggressive bite marks and a haunted artifact that mystifies researchers. Today, we talk with paranormal investigator Daryl Marston about his experiences with dark and unexplained entities at the haunted Anderson Hotel. The Anderson Hotel kind of fell in my lap by accident uh, when we did the investigation. Um, we'd actually seen it on Paranormal Lockdown on the first season, and uh, we, we knew Jeff. Um, he he's the actual care, he was actually, he was the actual guy who was doing the caretaking and running the paranormal stuff. Uh, Jeff Walter out of the uh, building and um, so we hit him up and said hey can we come down and he said yeah no problem so we came on we next thing i know we're in a car driving to kentucky and i've never been to kentucky before at that at that particular time so we got there and um it, 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 when you first see the the anderson hotel it's just on the strip and it's only two stories high it's not a really big building it's an historical building. It probably dates back to the early 1800s. Um, but it, over the years, it became a um, kind of a sleazy hotel, motel, I should say, actually, but it's called the Anderson Hotel, um, where people were actually staying there and living there on, you know, low budget, um, people with problems, with drug problems. There was all kinds of stuff going on in the building at the time, all the way up to the late 80s when it actually closed down. Um, so, yeah, it kind of started there. I don't know a whole lot about the actual history. I can tell you about a lot of the, the things that happened in the building um, as far as uh, the paranormal activity and people passing away in the building, which we, the ones we know of. So, I mean, I can, I can take you from there. Yeah, let's do that. Let's talk about some of the things that have gone on in the building that people have passed away. When it was an active hotel or home, in some cases, uh, towards the end of its active life. Yeah, it was a low, basically, it, it, what it came was, was a, basically a low income, um, like motel, ho- hotel type thing where you, you know, pay week to week to stay there. Um, probably, I don't know, anywhere from 75 to 100 bucks a week. And you lived there, you had your own room. Um, you had to share bathrooms. Um, most of the bathrooms were in the hallways. Um, so you, you can imagine, you know, maybe 20 people sharing two or three bathrooms. Uh, so, and they had a, it had a landlord that actually stayed there, somebody who managed the building. And from what I hear, the the one of the previous, the one of the last guys who actually ran the building was a real uh, ball breaker. He was a real real jerk, real nasty guy who took advantage of the the tenants of the building. He basically walked around with a nightstick um, type ordeal, and he would you know bang on the doors and threaten them and all kinds of stuff. Um, I could tell you about the one teenage girl. That, uh, they don't really have her name. That at, at the time I was there, there was no name to her. She did commit suicide in, a, in this one room, and the actual mattress that she committed suicide is still in that room um, with the blood stains and everything on it. Um, so it, it's really surreal when you walk into this building because what happened was it got closed down in the late 80s. They shut it down, they boarded it up, and it stayed closed up until I think it was 2015, 2016, they opened it back up. Like um, as an active hotel? These... No, no, it's not an active hotel anymore. No, but it what, was up what, to the what, late 80s, like 89, I believe it closed, but, 88 or 89. I guess my, um, my question is when they, when they opened it back up in 2015, you mean did they just take the, the boards off the building to go check it out, or did they actually open it as, as a, a business of some sort? Oh no! They the upstairs is was still closed off. Um, downstairs they turned into like a a deli type bakery mm. um, where you can actually go in there and eat, sit down. It was a really nice little setup they had going on. But the upstairs was still the original hotel. So when they opened it up, I mean, there was stuff in there 
that was still there from the 1980s. Um, the beds are still in the building. The furniture is still in the building. It was really surreal walking in there because it was been closed up for 30 some odd years. And you still have this blood stained mattress sitting in the bed on, on the bed frame in this one room with the blood stains where you could see where she apparently either cut her wrist or did something to that nature and she bled out. Um, it, it's very creepy. There's blood stains in some of the bathtubs still that you can see. Um, they actually apparently came in there with uh, luminol and actually tested them to make sure they were blood and they were blood. Um, so, th- they, yeah, so they put some research behind it before they actually went out there and said, hey, this is blood, guys. No, they actually did some research, had some professional come in, test it, and it is blood. And they are the original artifacts to the building. They're still there. Wow. Was there a reason why all that stuff just kind of got sealed up when they shut the hotel down? I mean, sometimes there's nothing more of, than the reason to it of just, you know, we're shutting down. We're not going to make money on this. I'm not going to invest my time or money in cleaning any of this up and we're boarding it up. Or, or was there something more to sealing this place off as almost a time capsule? I think it was more of a, um, a county or a state issue that came in. They saw the living conditions of the place. They shut them down. The owners, you know, may have went, they, they may have went bankrupt. They may have just walked away from the building. And then this other lady came in and purchased the building to turn it into this deli restaurant type situation downstairs. So what she did is, I guess, um, she decided to open the top part up and she had Jeff Waldrop come in and start doing the paranormal investigations because he runs the paranormal tours there. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeff Waldrop from the uh, Nick Groff tours, everybody knows who he is. That's who was running it. So it ran for about a year or so, and it's closed down now. I think too much stuff was going on there. It's a very active building. Um, we actually talked to the people downstairs, some of the people who work in the deli restaurant, and they have actually seen apparitions downstairs just walk right across the room. So it's a very active area. Um, I was going to I was going to um, say uh, how how far into the opening of the the deli when this building gets unboarded and essentially the crypt is opened uh, did it take for them to start having some sort of activity going on with with their restaurant Well I think see I think at the time we were there the restaurant had been open for about 2 years um, and they were getting pretty much from the get go from the day they opened I mean everybody in there has had some kind of paranormal experience from what we understand um and then when they opened the time capsule upstairs up, it just ramped up. Um, there's some very dark energy in the upstairs part of that building, especially on the one side. It's kind of sectioned off into two sections. Um, when you go up there, um, when you first walk up this really huge staircase um, to the left-hand side, it's, it's dark, don't get me wrong, but the right-hand side of the building is very dark. You feel as soon as you walk into that, that hallway, it's just like, it's overwhelmingly it's just a negative energy there when you think about the building and uh, when the the haunted activity first i guess started getting reported that would be my question is when was the first uh, thought process of this or the first reports of this building having something paranormal going on with it obviously it had been boarded up for so long then it got opened up into something did it start being reported once uh the the bakery went in or were there reports prior to that well yeah there was reports it's it's it, it more it was a folklore type thing around the town that the, the building was haunted and you know everybody kind of knew about it i mean it's funny because when we were there the two times that we went and actually investigated the building just standing out front of the building, you have people walking by like, oh, you guys are doing a paranormal investigation. You're here to see the ghosts, aren't you? Like, they, like these are just regular town folk walking around like, yeah, watch out for those ghosts in that building. It's just, it, it's weird. But they're like, yeah, okay, all right. So they, they all know about it. And plus it's been on, it was on paranormal lockdown the first season. So uh, it, it, it hit TV and it really blew up. And a lot of people started, you know, really recognizing the building. It's a shame they had to shut it down um, I think that the owner um, really didn't want the that kind of publicity anymore because it was getting too much, you know, for them to even deal with. But the paranormal activity there has been known for quite a while, being such a dark location, and everybody knew the stories of people dying at the at the Anderson and the the murders, the suicides. There's quite a few suicides there as well. Um, the there was some some witch black 
like black magic, witchcraft, satanic stud type stuff going on in the building at one point as well. We found out um, there's still some artifacts from that still there that they kept. Um, I can explain that a little bit more. Basically, the 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 old landlord or the manager of the building was at some point pra- practicing some kind of black magic. Um, it's something to lure in like a dark spirit, um, more like a, of a dark witch type thing. Not so much satanic, I shouldn't say, but more of a, to lure in a dark spirit. Um, and what it was is you, we found, um, we well, actually we didn't find them, but I guess Jeff had found them at some point in the building, these scrolls, like these old scrolls where he'd actually taken wood inscribed in this all this like satanic witchcraft like spells and stuff to 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 raise evil spirits um and they were still in the, in the building they were i think they found them in a closet originally uh so they think a lot of that dark energy came from that and plus with all the negative things going on in the building it would just be a battery for for negativity uh, so uh, just so i understand correctly you said it, it, it shut up now does that mean the the bakery is gone too the building is just sitting vacant as a whole or just the upstairs is not being touched just the upstairs from what i understand i have okay. not been back there in two years um they actually closed i think we were probably one of the last investigations in the building okay. we went twice um over like a three-month period because uh, the first time I went, I just I, I had too many questions that weren't answered, and I had to go back a second time because so much stuff had happened to me in the building the first time there, and I was just kind of lured back to it. Um, the second time we went there wasn't quite as intense. We had some really good moments. Don't get me wrong; we get called a lot of really great EVPs, had a lot of activity, but the first time was very dark. And the strange thing is, we were walking through the building with Jeff. Um, he was giving us a tour of the building you know, when we first got there. And he's like, I, he said, I've not felt this energy in the building since Nick and uh, Katrina were here. And I was like, what do you mean? He said, he said something's going to happen tonight. It's, it's, you can feel the energy in the building. And, and you honestly could feel this weird, strange, uh, static electricity in the building, especially on the one side of the building. It was very, very intense. Like everybody was kind of like on pens and needles. Take us um, take us back to the very beginning of your first investigation there, the first moments you walked through the door. How did it feel? How did it start? And, and walk us through the evening. Um, okay, so we we got there. Uh, we got a little we got there a little bit early, so no one was there to let us in. So we actually went to the downstairs, ate some you know lunch and stuff, and then you know, we started asking questions to the people who were working downstairs, you know, and they, they gave us a, they, they really didn't say too much about what was going on upstairs, but they said that they told us what, you know, they see, you know, one person's had seen an apparition walk from one side of the room to the other people, you know, they've had like pots and pans and plates fall off the shelves for no reason, just weird stuff happening. So we're like, we're like okay, cool. That's, that's, that's good. That's good to know. So then, you know, Jeff shows up, he lets us in the building, we go up, and literally in the first 10 minutes of walking around this building, I got this, I'd never been in there before. I, I've seen it on TV, but TV doesn't yet really give you the, logist, the gist of it all. So, I mean, it, it's a lot bigger than people think it is. So we're walking around the building, and I just wander off away from everybody. Like, I knew where I was. Like, something was basically puppeting me and pulling me through the building, and it was like, I was just, and I could hear people talking, come to find out they... I hear them, they come looking for me. I'm in a bathroom standing in front of a mirror, just staring at the mirror talking. And it was, it was so weird. And Jeff's like, you got to get him out of the building and, and, and shake it off him. So they pulled me out of the building and I, and it's just like this, I had this like m- massive energy just leave my body when I, I was, I was like so worn out after that, like so tired. Um, like something had just taken all my energy from me. And he's like, see, this is what I was, he's like, this is what I'm talking about. Something's going to happen in this building tonight. Do you have any recollection when that was going on of, of standing there talking in the mirror or almost, was it like a, a daydream where suddenly you pop out of it and it's like, boom, what, 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 what happened? Yeah, it, it's exactly how you just explained it. I mean, it was like, it was like, I could hear people talking and I, I was, I, I was physically, I could physically know where I was, but I had no control over it. Like, I knew I was staying in this dark bathroom, staring in a mirror for no reason at all, talking to something that wasn't there. And then I could hear them 
probably you know, 100 feet away from me down this hallway looking for me, like going in and out of every room, calling my name. And I didn't answer them until they found me. And it was just so real. I, I had, then I, when they got me out of the building, I had more control of myself. I was just very drained of energy. I was like, man, that's weird. He said, yeah, that's weird. He said, I've seen that before in this building. He said, we've seen people get scratched, and there's also people getting bit in the building. I was like, what do you mean getting bit? He's like, well, they're, they get bite marks. Like the one investigator that investigates with him actually got bite a bite mark on the back of his, his calf, and it looks like teeth. He shows a picture of it. It looks like a full row of human teeth on the back of his calf. We're like, I was like, no way. I was like, yes. So... I'll get to that too because we had something like that happen later in the night. Mm -hmm. But you know, we investigated. We we're we're doing the investigation. Everything's going good. We're getting a lot of really cool stuff, you know, with the REM pods and this and that and some EVPs. So it it kind of dies down around one or two ish in the morning. So we're like, well, let's go over and let's do a um, Echo Box session in the, in this one part of the building that we felt you know was the darkest part. So we get over there. And if anybody's ever used an echo box, they know it's 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 very echoey and it it, it speaks when it's 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 just like uh, SB11 or SB7. It, you get like burst of uh, of language. You know, you might get one full word and another word, but it doesn't really like talk like we're talking right now. <laughs> but so we get to over there. The echo box is doing its thing. Yeah, you know, we're talking to it, and all of a sudden the echo box starts counting backwards. It's gone four, f three, two, one, four, three, two, one. And we're like, what is, th what, what is that? And then we start hearing the Lord's Prayer. This is us, God, truth. The four of us that were investigating this building start hearing the Lord's Prayer backwards. Well, no, I'm sorry, not backwards. The counting was backwards. The Lord's Prayer was like just chanting of the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. And we're like, are we hearing the Lord's Prayer right now? And we're like, yes, we're hearing the Lord's Prayer on the echo box like somebody sang it. You, it's not possible. You can't, it's, 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 it's physically not possible to do an echo box. Um, so we don't know what we were getting. Um, and then that's when all hell broke loose. Um, the guy who was filming, uh, the one investigator who was with us, Keith, he actually, he, he actually felt something smack him on the back of his neck. And he turned around, I could see, I was like, dude, are you all right? He's like, he said, yeah, I'm fine. Something just hit me. I was like, you sure? He said, I'm sure you didn't run into something. He said, no, something just smacked me on the back of my neck. Look at my neck. And it did look like some of my hand prints across the back of his neck. I said, okay. So, and all of a sudden he said, oh man. And it looked down. He got the same bite marks on the back of his leg that the guy, the other investigator got. He had, it looked like teeth going across the back of his leg, like three or four teeth on the top and three or four teeth on the bottom. And it was, it was amazing to see it. It, it. it freaked him out. He was pretty shook up. Yeah, he was pretty shook up. So um, the one girl, him, over there, they were both shook up. So I said, go ahead and get Stephanie out of the room, Keith. Take her out of the room. Go back to the, the main base and start, let's start getting stuff together. And let's get out of here because things are getting really out of hand. So the other girl sitting in the corner, I look over with the flashlight and she's rocking back and forth in this rocking chair. I'm like, what are you doing? Let's go. And I'm starting to get angry at this point. And she's just got this weird sm smirk on her face. I'm like, stop messing around. And here's the thing is, Tony, they, in the building at the time, like we had to have people there in a, there's a, a room at the very front of the hotel. And there's three or four guys in there, other investigators who are running the actual building. And they're on static cam watching everything that's going on and videotaping it. They weren't with us. But they, we, we just knew they were there all night. They didn't bother us. We didn't hear them or see them. We just knew they were there. So they're watching us on static camera. Um, so I'm, I'm I, I bring a chair and I set it in front of her. I said, look, we got to go. I don't know what's wrong with you, but we got to get out of this building because everybody's getting freaked out right now. And I kept hearing something out of my left, on my left side. And there was a doorway there in this bedroom. And I kept looking to the left-hand side like there's something there. And then I talk to her, and all of a sudden she looks over there, and I kind of look over, and I hear something run toward me. And I turn real quick, and the next thing I know, I'm laying on the floor. Now, I was sitting in a chair, and next thing I know, I'm laying on the floor. The chair is totally smashed to pieces. I don't know what happened. It was like a, 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 a burst of energy just came right at me. I don't know if it was me lunging back or this burst of energy that may push me back. But all I know is I, when I 
came to, I was laying on the floor on my back, and it was dark in the room. And I hear them saying, what was that? I guess they heard me fall. So they come running into the room, and next thing I know, they're like, hey, get up. What's going on? And the, the guys in the camera room came out and said, you guys have to go now. Something, something bad is happening in this building. you got to get out. So that's the last thing I remember. So I, I remember taking my crew to this main room and us packing our stuff up. Now there's this big light there. And, uh, um, uh, it's like a, a shot, like a work sh- light, um, halogen light that set to a stand. And that's the only lighting that was in the actual room for us to go by. So we're trying to pack up all our stuff, getting it all. And the two investigators walk downstairs. They take out to the car. I'm in there by myself with the other girl who's just sitting in the corner. Oh, now I don't know what was going on with her. I'm trying to get packed up so we can get out of there. And she, next thing she says to me was, you want to see, you want to see me blow out a light? I'm like, what do, you, what do you mean blow out a light? And all of a sudden, the light behind me, the halogen bulb, exploded. <laughs> I, I, nearly, I nearly cried. <laughs> I was in the pitch black. All I know is I ran to the doorway and opened the door so I could have light, some light. And by that time, the other investigators were coming out and said, we're out of here. I said, I don't know what's going on. So we got everybody out of the building, and that was my first story at Anderson. I was done. I said, We're, I'm, I'm out of here. I don't know what that was. I don't know what possessed you to say what you said, and that bulb just blow out, but it happened. I swear to you, as I swear to you, as I'm standing here talking to you, it happened. Yeah. At, at that point, I mean, obviously, this is getting pretty intense and, and pretty dark. What's going through your mind? Is there ever the moment of maybe we should leave or is it more like let's keep going no i we we were done okay. even the, the investigators who were in the other room who were running the the actual building they're like you guys have to go okay he said they're like you got to go there's something amp- amping up in here we haven't seen this in a long time and somebody's going to get hurt and they left right after us they walked right out the door after us and locked the door and drove off into the night you know this is about three four o'clock in the morning so yeah, we're in the middle of Kentucky, and like I just all I wanted to do was get the hell home. I still had like a ten hour, eleven hour drive ahead of me, and all I wanted to do, I didn't care. I was so amped up at that point, and basically couldn't believe what happened. I mean, I drove straight through the night and got back, you know, to the East Coast, and I was, I was just like, and I finally, you know, decompressed and like it kind of took it all in. I was, I, I, I was shocked by what happened. I didn't believe it. You know, it's just like it was just too much to to even to 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 believe it was it was and that's why i had to go back for the second time yeah so you you decide to go back for the second time um except before i get to that question let me ask you you know they were telling you the people who are running this you know we got to get out of here it's amping up it's amping up they're basing this and basing that opinion i'm assuming on some sort of experience that they had there where it did get amped up and and they were there to see it or experience just how bad it could get did did they ever explain to you or share any of that with you as to what of just how bad it has gotten no this is what happened we uh we make we try to make contact with them for about a two week period just to get the videotape Mm -hmm. like because they were they were videotaping too on a static cam and we wanted the the video to see what actually happened what knocked me out of the chair what was you know because i mean this is over over like a maybe an eight to ten minute period all this was happening so we, they would never contact us back. Uh, we contacted Jeff Waldrop and be like, hey man, can you get the video for us? Cause he, he, they weren't with him either. And he's like, I'll try to get it for you. And he had no success either. So I said, well, can we come back? He said, yeah. So we went back again, probably about two and a half months later, um, just to see, try to find out what happened. And we took a different bunch of people with us this time. Yeah, three different investigators, um, just to see if it was something with one of those investigators besides myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we, you know, the second experience there was nowhere near as dark as the first. We did get a lot of really great EVPs. Um, there were some moments there where you, you know, the REM pods were going off and we were asking a lot of crazy questions. We tried to do a seance in the one room. They allowed us to do that. Really didn't get a whole lot out of it. So it, it took on a whole different energy the second time we were there. Um, so, yeah, the first time was amazing. The second time was amazing, too, but nothing like the first. Yeah. 
that, that, that certainly sounds like it. Let's start talking about that second experience that you had there and what went on uh, within the walls of the Anderson. Okay, well, the second one, what, what we did was uh, we set up with a team out of England um, who actually are on, they're on my show now, uh, the American Ghost Hunter show, uh, Alex and Helena. Uh, they're bowling paranormal at the time. And what they did was we did a live feed with them from the Anderson. Uh, on They had a show. Um, it was a um, uh, podcast. So we did this podcast with them live from it for probably about an hour and a half, two hours, where we did, um, they were asking questions while we were running the SB-11, the Echo Box, and all kinds of stuff. They were hearing stuff that we weren't hearing, which was strange, on their show. Um, they were hearing people talking that weren't wasn't us. They were getting responses um, through their the actual. I, I think they were using a phone or we were on a computer. I can't remember. Um, they were getting responses coming through that we weren't hearing. We were getting something different. They were getting something totally different. Not they were getting like a a, a total almost conversation with an older gentleman uh, that was kind of weird coming through. Um, so we hear most most of that during this whole thing. They played it back for us. Like, hey, you, did you guys hear this? And like, no, we didn't hear any of that. Uh, we were there the whole time you were, but we didn't hear it. So what we were basically getting was a lot of uh, Echo Box stuff, a lot of uh, SB11, SB7, um, talking over it. Uh, we tried to recreate what happened the first time. Um, we did get some uh, moments where we did see some dark shadow play in the one hallway, in the one room that we had the experience with before. Uh, which was, we did see a shadow figure that three of us saw this actual shadow figure standing at the end of the hallway and dart into a room and by we actually thought it was a person in the building that's how prevalent it was and we ran down there and it's probably only about 75 80 feet away from us at the end of this hallway and we got into this room and there was nothing there There there's no human there There there's no way for them to get out of the building it's on the second story there's no windows open everything was boarded up so yeah i mean great experience uh it was a top-notch uh investigation just like the first one but the first one just it took us to a whole nother level of is this is real this this stuff i mean some of the stuff you see in the movies like this is what you're thinking yeah. people getting knocked out of chairs and and people being able to do stuff like blow out light bulbs with you know by just saying it it's if you think it's movie it's not always movie <laughs> it, it can really happen and it really is like as an investigator it really open my eyes to like hey there's something more out there than just spirit there's it's it's not just yeah the 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 humans who have passed away there's some dark energy out there that may not be human um it's something else what let's start talking about the um exactly that what you think is in that building and what you think is haunting it obviously having you know some time now to kind of look back on it kind of reflect on uh the stories of the factual stories of of who's been in that building who's died in that building in, in various ways shapes and forms and then the experiences that you had there what does it come down to in that building are there multiple things going on some that were human some that were not tell me about that yeah, I think I think of a lot of it. There's there's some residual energy there. There's some uh, some some negative energy as far as this person who is doing this this dark black magic type stuff is you know almost uh, uh, satanic type stuff. Um, I do think there is some intelligent spirits there. Uh, some are good, some are bad. I think some are are just trapped there. I think they've been trapped there since the day they died. And, it, you know, with them reopening that building, I mean, could, could you imagine, I mean, just being locked away for 30 years and all of a sudden somebody just opening the door and just the energy you would have, you know, just to see light again. And it, and that's what I think happened there. I think all this stuff was all this bad and good and, and this, it, you know, all this energy was just locked away for so long. And when they opened that building up, man, it was just like gangbusters. It didn't know what to do. And it had so much to feed off of. Where it didn't have that before. It didn't have the energy of a human walking through the building, you know, with all their equipment and, you know, all these batteries and energy and stuff it could feed off of. It didn't have that. And now it's just like, whatever it is, it wants to stay there. It doesn't follow you home like, like, like when I was at the House of Wills where it actually followed me back to my house. No, this energy, when you walk out that door, it's gone. It's like it doesn't want to leave. It knows that's its home. That's where it thrives. And it does have, has no reason to follow you. 
It just and it, it doesn't want to follow you. It, it's at home there. It just doesn't want you there, which is interesting because because right. it almost seems like it it's able to um, to project itself more when there is people there and all that equipment that it can feed off of. But at the same time, it, it doesn't want anyone there. Is could it just because it's at peace and it doesn't want to even be known? Right. I think it. I think it. it believe me, I do think it likes when people are there because it gives us something to feed on. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it doesn't. It doesn't want to leave the building. It, it's like it's almost. I, I don't. I, I don't know if it's trapped there. Like something's holding it back. Mm-hmm. Like once you get through those doorways, it's like crossing the line. Like you know, it can't cross it. It's it's weird. It's 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 something I've never felt before. Anderson is a. a, a it's a gem, and it's a very mysterious place. I would love to go back there someday. I just don't think it's going to happen. I don't think they're going to open the doors back up, be honest with you. I think they had too much happen, too many negative things happen. And, and people were, I mean, from what I understand, people were getting hurt in the building. Um, i seen it firsthand. I mean, I got put through a chair. Um, I've heard other investigators getting hurt there, too, you know, getting bit, getting scratched, uh, getting you know almost possessed that you know what i call puppeting not so much possessed um puppeting basically where it takes over you you still have you know functions but you can break away from it mm-hmm. um i i i think it the energy there is stuck there for some reason i think it's been sealed there maybe somebody came in and sealed it so it can't leave um i think if it did le- yeah i think if it if it could leave it would I think it would try to follow you, but I don't think it can. I, I think, and I don't think it's 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 not the D word. It's not a demon. I think it's just some really dark spirit that has a lot, a lot of strength. They could do a lot of things, and it did. It showed us that first investigation what it can do. That wraps up the first part of our conversation. Part two for you tomorrow, right here on the feed. Be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts so you don't miss that. If you want ad-free access to all of our episodes, simply sign up through Apple Podcasts. Even try it for three days free and binge away with no commercials. You'll also get advanced access to all of our episodes well before they're released to the public, all commercial free. Apple Podcasts, check it out. Or patreon.com slash the grave talks. Until next time, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening to The Grave Talks.